you can you can start now. Okay. Um, it says that the... you have to click on continue. Okay. So uh, first of all, uh, good afternoon, everybody. And I wish to thank the organizers of the seminars for inviting me. And uh, the subject I choose uh, is uh, non-equilibrium. There is no question that uh, most of what, uh, what happens uh, in uh, earth sciences uh, uh, is a non-equilibrium phenomena. And, uh, uh, I mean, in the last decades, uh, there have been some progress, uh, in, but uh, one must uh, understand that uh, this is, uh, oh, I, it doesn't. Just, just click once on Zoom and then it should work. Okay. Yes, now it's working. So that's the abstract uh, that you have already read, I think, uh, in advance. And uh, uh, non-equilibrium is, uh, uh, is an, an almost infinite world. And uh, you cannot hope to make, uh, to, have a, to have a unique theory for every situation. And uh, in this seminar, I will touch only a uh, few points. Uh, <clears throat> the first thing we have to understand uh, uh, why reversible process uh, uh, are more difficult to study than understanding equilibrium. Because uh, in, uh, in equilibrium, you have uh, the Gibbs distribution, which is uh, where you get a uh, essentially for free. And uh, so you have the probability distribution that uh, you can use for calculations. But uh, in uh, once you are out of equilibrium, uh, dynamics becomes essential and uh, you cannot uh, uh, skip it. And um, in the typical situation you have many situations and many uh, uh, scales in both uh, space and time. So uh, since uh, I think that the audience is mainly uh, people from earth sciences. So typical cases of non-equilibrium, for example, in the atmosphere is a hurricane. But then you may go to a much larger uh, scale, to a much larger scale, and then you have a, a galaxy, which is also a system not in equilibrium. Then you go into the microscopic world, and then biology, uh, <clears throat> it's a, uh, uh, for example, let's take the case of molecular motors. This is what, for example, when you wave your hand, uh, I mean, there are billions of molecular motors uh, which transform chemical energy into, uh, into <coughs> mechanical uh, movement. But, and that also happens out of equilibrium. Then you have also on a slow uh, scale, you have, uh, for example, uh, earthquakes and tecton tectonics. And finally, you have explosion uh, is a typical non-equilibrium phenomenon. Uh, now, of all these phenomena, uh, people have attempted to make a theory and uh, now, you see, you have to start from the simplest situations. So, uh, for example, the closest to uh, equilibrium states are the so-called stationary states. So, 
states in which the difference with equilibrium is that there is some flow of energy through the system. And, uh, and <clears throat> essentially in all non-equilibrium phenomena, there is a flow of both energy and other uh, physical properties like uh, an electric current or a chemical flow, a chemical substance and, and so on. Uh, so a typical example is the flow of heat flow, uh, the flow of heat in an iron rod uh, whose uh, endpoints are at different temperatures. Or even I mean in the simplest uh, circuit, electric circuit that you describe with the Ohm's law is, uh, is, um, is a typical non-equilibrium situation. <clears throat> the, the interesting, what has been discovered in the last, uh, uh, let's say, 20, 20, maybe 30 years, uh, you see, uh, for many, many decades, uh, uh, we had uh, a linear theory. Uh, so a theory of phenomena near equilibrium that was due to Onsager and was formulated back in uh, 1931, and, uh, but uh, the, the point is that the most interesting phenomena uh, they are seen when the macroscopic equations, uh, which describe uh, at the macroscopic level, the dynamics are uh, nonlinear. And then you have, uh, for example, you have long range space correlations, which brings this non equilibrium phenomena close to, in, in this respect, close to critical phenomena. So, a typical setting for a system in a stationary state is uh, uh, that you have uh, several flows. Uh, going through the system, but, and uh, they may interact with each other. And of course, uh, if you want to understand the essential of the problem, you have to start with just one current. And that is what we shall do mainly in this, uh, in this talk. Now, what you would like to do is, uh, for example, uh, to what extent you can do thermodynamics of these states? Uh, do you have general principles like those of thermodynamics? And the, the first difficulty that you meet in this program is that there is no obvious definition of a basic thermodynamic concepts like free energy or entropy in states far from equilibrium. And then you have an additional uh, thermodynamic quantity, which is the current. Uh, and current uh, involve time in their definition. So it's uh, yeah, what, what you expect to do is some kind of space-time thermodynamics uh, when you are far from equilibrium. You cannot ignore uh, time anymore. Now, uh, as in many questions, so modern physics, uh, it's good to go back to Einstein, who actually he wrote uh, uh, essentially the first formula, which may, in modern language would be called the uh, learning equation, equation. This is in a paper on, <clears throat> uh, on uh, Opalescence theory and fluctuation, which are due to thermodynamic fluctuations, it's a phenomenon which is due to thermodynamic fluctuations. And um, uh, he wrote uh, an important paper, which has been essentially rediscovered in recent years. Um, the reason why is less known than the other papers by Einstein is the fact that. Uh, while the first part uh, is uh, essentially new and in, 
Then there is a second part in which he makes a mistake. And uh, uh, so part of the work is uh, uh, essentially uh, is essentially wrong. And this was strongly criticized by his contemporaries for, for this thing. But so I, I'm quoting from Einstein. And then you see that uh, he, he doesn't accept the famous uh, equation by Boltzmann connecting entropy to probability. Uh, you see, because the probability, to calculate the probability to verify this uh, relationship, you have to make a theory of the microscopic system, and uh, uh, which is different in every case. And so it may be very complicated. So what he says, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, it's quite hard on Boltzmann. Consider my phenomenon point of view, this equation appears devoid of content. Uh, for some strange reason, uh, Boltzmann, who was very admired both by Einstein and Planck, but somehow he irritated them. And, uh, and uh, as we shall see also in another text by, by Einstein. So uh, you see, uh, what Einstein did, uh, he says, uh, instead of verifying this equation is almost impossible. That is why it doesn't have uh, a phenomenological content. But uh, on the other hand, we can put our hands on entropy from, a thermo from thermodynamics. So let's use entropy to calculate probabilities by inverting this relation. And that is what he, he does, I'm still quoting what, uh, what he says, uh, he normalizes uh, this, um, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, probability by <clears throat> using the fact that uh, at, uh, uh, okay, in equilibrium entropy is a maximum. And, and then, uh, and on the other hand, the entropy depends only on macroscopic variables. So the, he writes this formula, this formula four, uh, and the lambdas represent macroscopic thermodynamic variables. So, uh, and then he uses this formula to study the uh, opalescence phenomenon. And uh, he uses, uh, I mean, uh, he uses it uh, and, uh, correctly as far as uh, the system is far from critical from a critical point so as far from a phase transition but then at the phase transition the the mistake he makes in supposing that uh, you have uh, uh, points uh, different points in the system are probabilistically independent which is not true because uh, you have long range uh, correlations. And he was strongly criticized by Einstein um, uh, in, in, in a, another famous paper. So when we go out of equilibrium, what we should do is to find a generalization of uh, this formula for, for non equilibrium situation. So you see, <clears throat> You see that uh, the exponent, and this is clearly a large deviation formula because uh, uh, microscopic fluctuations are very rare. And then uh, you see you have a very large number in front, uh, in front of the variation of entropy. So uh, I believe that this is the first appearance of a, real, of a genuine large deviation formula in uh, in physics and statistical mechanics. Then there is another text uh, of Einstein, very interesting, which I believe is not uh, in, included in his collected papers, and where he stresses again the fact that you should use the Boltzmann formula uh, for calculating probabilities rather than uh, very 
tying it by using the, the knowledge of entropy that you get from thermodynamics. And to show that uh, this is in fact possible, he uh, studies, he derives from this uh, black deviation formula. Uh, uh, you see the probability <coughs> that uh, you have a fluctuation uh, of the mass of the particles from the bottom uh, and from the equilibrium. Uh, and the mu is the is essentially the mass of the of the particle, and mu zero is the oh, if you want is the mass of a small volume of uh, uh, of leak of fluid, and mu zero is the uh, the displaced fluid. So this mu minus mu zero is uh, is positive, and. And, and this is, uh, has been something experimentally verified by, by, by Perrin. The other thing, uh, remarkable thing that he does is that uh, he derives the law of uh, uh, Brownian motion for which you know that uh, he wrote fundamental papers on the Brownian motion. And so you see that the square fluctuation is actually Proportional, actually proportional to time. So the movement of a Brownian particle goes like the square root of uh, the space movement uh, goes like the square root uh, of time. So uh, just by, uh, I mean, I discovered this, uh, this um, paper uh, when I was already uh, working on this um, non-equilibrium phenomena. And uh, uh, my idea is that uh, to search for extensions of formulas like what I call formula three, which is uh, this uh, uh, Einstein relationship, but you have to generalize it to a non-equilibrium situations. Uh, <clears throat> So in order to, uh, I mean, in order that, he, that this law may have a phenomenological meaning, uh, you have to understand what is this difference of uh, entropy minus the maximum entropy in an isolated system. Uh, in an isolated system, my energy is conserved so that if the volume remains constant, then this quantity is just uh, uh, minus the difference in uh, Helmholtz free energies. And uh, so, uh, which uh, we know what they mean. Uh, um, it's uh, the, the minimal work that you have to do in order to create uh, the, the fluctuation. So this is, uh, and now, the interesting thing is that the notion of minimal work has a meaning also out of equilibrium. So that is the, what we have to keep in mind in uh, going on. By the way, this is uh, all this uh, large deviation theory for equilibrium. Uh, you find a chapter in the Landau Lischitz book on statistical physics, which uh, uh, well, has become very uh, uh, more important uh, in uh, in recent uh, in recent times, uh, and also there uh, you find the formulation in terms in terms of minimal work. So, at at this point, uh, you have to introduce additional. Uh, hypothesis. Otherwise, so so far we have introduced the, the <clears throat> uh, we introduced the hypothesis that uh, out of equilibrium you may speak of uh, rare fluctuations, so uh, and probabilistically of large fluctuations, and then you have to try to use in some intelligent way uh, this uh, relationship. 
uh, now, uh, the second hypothesis that uh, we introduce uh, is uh, the notion of local equilibrium. Now, local equilibrium means the following, that uh, at a macroscopic scale, but uh, at a scale which is small to the, with respect to the size of the whole system, uh, um, you may define local thermodynamic variables, and uh, which vary uh, smoothly on this scale. So this implies that the system reaches a local equilibrium in a time which is short, compared to the times typical of macroscopic evolution. So there is a separation of scales. But locally, in order to be able to define thermodynamic variables, you must uh, uh, suppose that the system is essentially in equilibrium. Uh, this is a notion, I mean, all what I'm going to say in this seminar has been verified in uh, simplified models, which can be controlled uh, mathematically. So uh, uh, it's not just, uh, uh, it's some, there is some step beyond the, C uh, the physicist level of mathematical uh, precision, let's say. Now, the other <clears throat> uh, hypothesis that we introduce, which is again verified in uh, models, uh, <clears throat> that you have uh, some kind of hydrodynamic equations. On the other hand, all models of uh, uh, climate dynamics are, are based on, uh, um, this, uh, on hydrodynamic uh, uh, equations. Here I will stick myself especially on equations of uh, uh, in divergence type. So they express uh, uh, local conservation laws. So they have the form uh, given by equation seven. And uh, so uh, the first equation is the conservation law, but then this current uh, the assumption is that it can be expressed in terms of uh, thermodynamic variables at the same time. And this is again verified in, uh, in models. And this is called usually Markovian hypothesis. But uh, uh, much of what I'm going to say can be extended. Uh, they are slightly more complicated They're also to equations uh, which are not in divergence form. And this is the case uh, of, uh, of some of the equations of models uh, of uh, climate dynamics. <clears throat> now, uh, a favorite example are diffusive systems because uh, uh, I mean, diffusive systems have almost, uh, they appear almost universally and then they are the simplest to, to study. So let's start from actually today, I will speak only mainly of diffusive system. So the so-called constitutive equations, that is the expression of the uh, current in terms of local thermodynamic variables are of this form. So you see the, the current is produced on, on one hand, from local gradients of the densities of the thermodynamic variables. And then there is a coefficient, which may be a nonlinear function of such variables. And then you may have an external field, and then you have a coefficient that we shall call the mobility, which also usually is a nonlinear function of the thermodynamic variables. And these are, uh, uh, symmetric positive definite matrices, but uh, mainly we shall restrict the to when the thermodynamic variables is just one. So this row may be a vector with many components, but actually uh, in order to go to the essential concepts, uh, we restrict to one uh, uh, 
only one component. And then you have to supplement the boundary conditions uh, which express the interaction with the reservoirs, uh, with the thermostats and uh, other, uh, and, and they usually are described this interaction by chemical potentials. And uh, you see, there are no inertial terms in these uh, equations. Uh, and uh, so th these are also phenomenological equations uh, in which uh, you, are, you can measure uh, the uh, diffusion coefficient and the mobility, and then you can use it uh, as. <clears throat> now, hydrodynamic equations have been derived uh, from several models, and uh, the mathematics involved is rather hard. So the, the, they are not so, except for. I mean, mathematical physicists are used to them, but uh, uh, not all physicists have uh, studied these proofs. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the, we have to deal with simplified models while uh, we cannot start from a gas of Newtonian particles because this, the present mathematics doesn't allow yet a rigorous derivation. So, now, <clears throat> in order to introduce fluctuations in this uh, hydrodynamics, uh, now uh, there is another way of doing, I've seen from uh, seminars uh, also by uh, uh, Melinda and also by Valerio Lucarini, in which, uh, uh, I mean, this, the basic assumption is that uh, the climate uh, is is, uh, is uh, obeys uh, is this can be described by chaotic dynamical systems, which of course has uh, stochastic properties. But a different idea, which goes back to Landau, consists in adding to the macroscopic equations a noise term. In the case, the hydrodynamic equation divergence form. In, the case, in this case, uh, we add that to the current fluctuating term. Now, uh, first of all, let me, in the Landau case, uh, the, the case in which uh, you find in the Landau Lifshitz books, uh, they consider only uh, linear hydrodynamic equations. While, as I said, all the interesting phenomena uh, come from uh, the non-linearity of these equations. And um, this, uh, uh, this noise has uh, the following characteristics that uh, <clears throat> uh, is uh, a white noise both in time and space. So it's a very singular object and uh, um, and then you see in the definition for a Gaussian process is enough to define the uh, second order moments. Uh, you see, you see this sky is generally, uh, in general, a nonlinear function of the function or function, local function of the thermodynamic variables. And K is the Boltzmann uh, constant. Uh, <clears throat> So this is the assumption which is usually made in what is called fluctuating hydrodynamics, which uh, was uh, resumed in this more general context of nonlinear equation in a famous paper by uh, Hohenberg and Alperin back in the 70s. So the hydrodynamic equations now takes this form. Uh, as I said, this can be everything supported by models. And then you see that you have an extra space derivative acting on the noise. So these are very singular equations and for which there is not yet a mathematical theory, but uh, for equations which uh, uh, are singular, but not as much as this one. There is a, a, a theory which has been uh, developed by several people, 
including Martin Heider, who got the film medal for, for this. Now, since, uh, okay, look at uh, this relationship between uh, the small j and the big j. So bring the big j to the left. So you have a small j minus big j, which is a fluctuation. And this fluctuation is described by Gaussian process. So we know everything about Gaussian processes. And so we may write the corresponding probability distribution, which uh, let me uh, uh, spend a few moments on this expression. Yeah, you see, uh, uh, the Avogadro uh, number k is, uh, is a very small quantity. So this is the form of, uh, it's also a large deviation formula. And what you have is a, is a probability on the trajectories of the, of, of the process, because you see you have an integration of time you take into account the evolution. And uh, uh, <clears throat> what is interesting is uh, the, the interpretation of this exponent. You see, and uh, read below, uh, think of an electric circuit. In this case, chi minus one is the resistance. And the double integral is the energy dissipated by the fluctuation according to Ohm's law. Um, the factor one fourth is, comes from, from the Gaussian and the equilibrium situation. Okay, so this uh, as an extremely uh, simple and universal form because uh, uh, you see, and uh, the, it, it's expressed in terms of a very physical and simple quantity is the energy dissipated, by the energy dissipated by the fluctuation uh, over a certain in, in interval of time. And uh, <clears throat> so, uh, and also, uh, is, uh, the reason why we think of, uh, of uh, Gaussian fluctuation described by the white noise is the fact that uh, uh, we can prove under very general condition for many probability distribution, the central limit theorem. So the central limit theorem leads to Gaussian distributions. So now uh, we have to understand how to generalize uh, this formula. So let me, uh, uh, now uh, then I will show you a uh, figure. Uh, the cost of a fluctuation. So what is the fluctuation? You are in a stationary state. Then by some uh, fluctuation, some uh, uh, fluctuation of a thermodynamic variable uh, is created. But then this may evolve arbitrarily, not follow necessarily the, the typical hydrodynamic behavior. So there will be two terms in the probability. One is the uh, static, if you want, static uh, term, which describes the fluctuation of the thermodynamic variable, and we shall interpret as the non-equilibrium free energy, and then you have a dynamical process. So you have a situation of this kind. You see, this uh, quantity, uh, like entropy, is uh, normalized to the, uh, at equilibrium. The, um, you remember the S minus S zero of the Einstein formula. So this formula, this uh, uh, what, which is called the quasi uh, non-equilibrium free energy of quasi potential will be zero when rho bar is the uh, stationary solution. So is the stationary state. And then uh, uh, this row will follow an arbitrary trajectory and the associated probability is given by this uh, I, which is the 
quantity which is defined at the bottom. Uh, so it is our exponent in the probability formula. Okay, so uh, using the, the, our large deviation probability formula, we have, we have this formula, which is given by equation 12. So that will be the quasi potential plus the term associated with the trajectory. And uh, the role uh, uh, of the um, Avogadro's number is taken by this uh, epsilon, which is, uh, describes the scale, uh, 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 the, 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 the scale of the small volume uh, which we take for the uh, macro, macroscopic um, situation for the validity of the uh, local equilibrium. So now, we, so now we go to the next hypothesis. The next hypothesis is that uh, there is uh, uh, a reverse dynamics, a reverse macroscopic dynamics. And uh, at the level of, uh, uh, since we are dealing now with the process due to the noise term, and there is a natural way of defining time reversal, so the uh, time reversal process is described by this probability p a on the trajectories, and uh, at the ledger of large deviations implies that uh, the the exponent for the direct process and the, and the time reversal process uh, is uh, the one that is described by equation, this equation 14. Now, if you write it explicitly, and uh, we get uh, this, uh, which I call a fundamental relationship. Uh, you see, this you may interpret it as a generalization to a non-equilibrium situation. You've got, it's also, also in equilibrium, a macroscopic version of the, um, of the microscopic uh, detailed balance condition. So <clears throat> uh, now we shall see that this leads uh, uh, to, uh, an, in, first of all, to uh, an equation by which we can calculate this uh, V quantity, this quasi potential, and uh, also to its interpretation and determination of the uh, <clears throat> uh, one fact we should keep in mind that the, the uh, uh, dynamics associated to the time reversal process, uh, contrary to the other, the original hydrodynamics, can be also non-local in space. And this is actually what happens in the simplest models. So, uh, and uh, so I skip some slides. Uh, there is an equation that you can derive from the above, uh, uh, let's say, macroscopic uh, balance uh, equation, um, which holds both in equilibrium and non equilibrium. You can derive an, a, in a very simple way an equation for this non equilibrium free energy, which in some cases uh, you can solve explicitly. And the solution in which you are interested is the maximal positive solution, which vanishes uh, on the stationary state. Now you can identify the optimal trajectory, which defines this, and you get the variational definition of this, uh, this non-equilibrium free energy. In fact, if you look at the, uh, uh, equation at the beginning of the slides, and you take as uh, the initial state uh, the stationary state. So 
V rho T1 is equal to zero. And then you identify rho at time T2 with the fluctuation. And then you take uh, the inf over all possible trajectories and time intervals. You obtain the variation of expression of this V rho, which uh, also can, in some cases, can be calculated directly, but could be also calculated uh, uh, numerically. And you see, uh, the interesting thing is that. Uh, uh, term IA, which is associated to the time reversal process, this is a positive quantity. So the best that you can do is to make it equal to zero. And then you identify the optimal solution, the optimal trajectory, which the, uh, solves the variational principle. It is uh, this uh, time reversed trajectory of rho and j, must be a solution of this adjoint hydrodynamics. And uh, uh, so, so, I mean, this uh, is a very simple interpretation, like the interpretation of this exponent in terms of energy dissipated. Uh, well, that, uh, let me skip. Um, uh, it is easy to see that uh, this, uh, uh, minimal line, uh, this minimal uh, work uh, is uh, equal to the energy dissipated by the thermodynamic force. Here I uh, use the Onsager terminology, which is the gradient of the uh, this derivative of this uh, potential. It's a, it's a very trivial calculation. Now, this I skip. Now, an example of calculation. This has been explicitly calculated for the simple exclusion process. The simple exclusion process is very simple to describe in the one dimensional uh, situation. It's a, it's a, you have a one dimensional lattice and you have particles which jump from one point to the other but uh, the, they can occupy a place only if it is uh, originally non-occupied. And uh, uh, this is characterized by a mobility, which is given by the product of rho times one minus rho. And so the hamilton yakovi equation takes this form. And uh, uh, this equation can be solved with, uh, and then by solving an associated ordinary differential, nonlinear ordinary differential equations. And then you get this formula 28, in which this non equilibrium uh, free energy is equal to the equilibrium free energy plus a term which is clearly non local in space, because the solution of this. Uh, nonlinear differential equation is a very complicated functional of the thermodynamic variable rho. So this is what induces long range correlation in non-equilibrium. And uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, this, uh, this phi is just the correction to the equilibrium uh, the V over the rho in which the first term is equation 26. The first term is the equilibrium term, and the other is the, the difference due to non equilibrium. Well, then I cannot, I don't have time to discuss the correlation functions, but in which, which have been observed experimentally, and uh, which uh, uh, you realize that you can get uh, this non long range correlations only if you have non-trivial diffusion or mobility, uh, non-trivial functions of the thermodynamic variables. So the hydrodynamic equations are non-linear. And now, you have, but we have a new variable, the current. Actually, I will be more precise in a moment. Uh, currents involve time. 
in the definition. So it is natural to consider space time thermodynamics. So the cost function of to produce a, a certain current trajectory is this one, in which I recall what is the relationship between rho and j. And then you define the time average of the fluctuation. And then you define this functional, uh, which is the infimum overall possible path ever in corresponding to this average quantity. Now you can trivially prove that this is a genuine thermodynamic functional in which in, in time, uh, they, in the sense that it is convex and all the, all the good properties of a thermodynamic variable, the thermodynamic functional. So you have a large deviation functional, a large deviation formula for the time average current, the time average fluctuation, which for large times has the formula of this last equation in the. So, and now have been discovered the several non equilibrium phase transitions. Singularities of these functionals describe non equilibrium phase transitions, and they've been proven to exist in various models. And so uh, I refer to the reference at the end, and uh, especially uh, the, <clears throat> uh, the uh, one of these articles. Now, let me summarize what uh, we have been seeing. So let's uh, summarize the, all the assumptions we made. Local equilibrium, microscopic evolution equation, constitutive equations, fluctuating hydrodynamics, large deviations, time reversed macroscopic dynamics. All these assumptions are supported by mathematically controlled non-trivial models. Well, it's not, and I think this is very strong because think of the role played by the ISEG model for the equilibrium situation and what we have learned about phase transitions, uh, both uh, far from the critical point and at the critical point with the normalization group from the easy model. Um, okay, so this uh, theory of macroscopic fluctuation provides a unified treatment of the thermodynamics of given diffusive systems and their fluctuations. But as I said, uh, essentially much of the, essentially, essentially what I've said holds also for uh, equation, hydrodynamic equations, which are not in divergence, are not uh, uh, continuity equations. In that case, uh, it's more complicated to calculate the large deviation functional. And uh, so, and you have to uh, make uh, some intelligent balance of thermodynamic and statistical mechanics of the argument. So, in, in the, the outcome is the purely microscopic theory, which can be used also as phenomenological theory, as input only, uh, uh, as input, uh, it's enough to have the transport coefficient, which are measurable. And you have new variational principle. Remember that entropy in statistical equilibrium statistical mechanics is defined by variational principles. So as far as uh, uh, well, I mean, the, so you have a generalization of the uh, Einstein formula for equilibrium. And uh, there are formulas which provide an interface between thermodynamics and the underlying. Um, I think the many application uh, can be expected in certainly in biology, but uh, uh, also, uh, I mean, even if they are not in general diffusive, I think also in in climate dynamics, and then. Um, some authors have uh, put the question how much of this can be extended to 
to um, quantum statistical mechanics, but the, the question has been posed uh, five or six years ago, you know, five years ago, but uh, so far uh, uh, the attempts have, have not uh, succeeded. Uh, so all I have described applies to classical systems. And so <clears throat> uh, Lorenzo Bersini, De Sol, uh, Davide Gabrielli, and Claudio Landin are the collaborators with whom I have developed. Uh, um, uh, uh, I mean, many people have contributed to, to this uh, microscopic fluctuation theories. And uh, uh, the contribution that we have developed in Rome have been done with these uh, people. And, uh, 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 but, uh, <clears throat> and uh, we wrote the first uh, uh, review for the, which uh, doesn't uh, include the thermodynamics of currents in 2007. And these are the, uh, uh, some lectures that I gave uh, at the school in uh, at the Newton Institute uh, in England, and uh, other lectures given at the same place are those by Derrida, which uh, also I recommend because uh, they are very popular and, and well written. Then we wrote. Uh, uh, a comprehensive uh, review more recently um, with the same author, with authors. And then uh, this year, very recently, has appeared uh, a review by Pedro Garrido, um, which includes also the discussion of uh, also we 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 did include some discussions of uh, uh, non uh, of, uh, of the hydrodynamic equation in non divergence form, but uh, he discusses this case also much more systematically. And then uh, let me quote uh, another paper which uh, goes back to the end of uh, 2015 in which there are some questions which were not included in our, uh, uh, in our review of 2015. So thank you very much for listening. I believe I respected the time scheduled. And uh, now I'm open for questions. <laughs> thank you so much, Professor Yona Lazinho, uh, for, the, for the very inspiring talk. Yes, and um, as, I, as I wrote in the chat, uh, please write your questions into the Q&A. And um, so I have a question, maybe, yes. before the other questions come. Yes, exactly. So in case of climate simulations, uh, we sometimes produce uh, these stationary out of equilibrium simulations. And as far as I understood, uh, you mean, you say that it is reasonable to use the, the techniques and the uh, concepts you mentioned also in case of these stationary climate simulations. Is that right? Uh, yes, I, I believe so. At least uh, that is a point uh, uh, from where to start. I mean, uh, uh, these are things, uh, I mean, Lagrange division formula are. Uh, different, uh, difficult to, to prove uh, in a mathematically controlled way. So uh, yeah. I think it's perfectly reasonable to start using them and then see what uh, comes out. And um, um, would you say that there are, there are some conditions the system should fulfill uh, in order to be able to use? Uh, <laughs> Uh, you see, in many situations, um, this, uh, uh, this uh, fluctuating hydrodynamics gives the, 
the same exact uh, uh, the same results as some exact calculations uh, and the same results that you can get from uh, um, uh, from assuming that you have a chaotic uh, a chaotic dynamical system so uh, uh, of of course, this is uh, rather empirical for the moment, but uh, for example, this uh, um, and this point of uh, the point of view of having stochastic uh, or having uh, um, a chaotic dynamical system has been developed very much by Galarotti, uh, his chaotic principle, and. Uh, we, well, actually, with Galarotti, we share an office in Rome and we get along quite well, even if we have a completely different point of view on uh, non equilibrium. Nice. Uh, yes, uh, someone has a couple of questions, but uh, Stephen Watson, but we asked him to write uh, the questions into the QA if it's possible. There is a question in the chat. In the chat, no. No, but I, I don't see any. any OK, there is, there is one question from Thomas Gilbert. Could you mm -hmm. comment on the consistency of local thermal equilibrium and long range, range correlations? Uh, can you repeat the question? Of course. Uh, could you comment on the consistency of local thermal equilibrium and long range correlations? Well, uh, uh, I think this is uh, why you have non equilibrium uh, uh, long range correlation. I don't think is yet completely. Um, completely understood. I think the basic behind this is the fact that the time reversed hydrodynamics is non local in, um, in space. So I think the ultimate reason is actually the, the, the possibility of a time reversal dynamics. Uh, you see, if you are uh, prepared to spend work on a system, you can even have heat flowing from lower temperatures to higher temperatures. So, and uh, uh, usually the, <clears throat> the definition we have adopted of time reversal requires the time reversal dynamics to be at the microscopic level to be non-local. I don't know whether this answers uh, the question. Yes, I hope so. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so we will unmute one of the attendees who has several questions. And so I, I think shall now take out, uh, shall take yeah. out the share. Thank, thank you. Ah, uh, it, yes, please ask your questions, Stephen. Thank you. Uh, wonderful talk. Really enjoyed it. A uh, couple of questions. The, the first one relates to the mathematical structure of these uh, effective equations. Are they purely variational, meaning there's an effective free energy? You have non-locality, but are they variational in structure? Uh, yes, at least for the... So, 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 that, so my, my question is... For the... Uh, I mean, for the diffusive systems. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, my, so my question is, what ingredients could could bring in? And because it is driven, so there are some contexts where driven can lead to non-variational effective field theory. So, what what additionally could be brought to bear here that could lead to that? Well, I well, I don't know. <laughs> okay, and, and 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 the second thing is back to the well posedness of the mathematical problem. You were indicating that the, uh, the mathematics is not quite there yet for this fluctuating current. So what happens if you regularize 
the fluctuations. So you've introduced a fast time scale uh, regularization. You mollify the fluctuations. Is that, is that something worth pursuing? Because you would still have a separation of time scale between your hydrodynamic time scale and a fast uh, statistical time scale. Well, at this again can be proven in models. But uh, I mean, there is no, uh, you see, the idea is that uh, uh, locally you have uh, equilibrium. This means that locally deviations from equilibrium are small. So you can linearize. And in fact, the constitutive, uh, you apply the constitutive equations of uh, which hold uh, locally. I mean, uh, so I, I don't know whether this uh, answers your question. Perhaps the question wasn't really precise enough anyway, but thanks, thanks anyway. No, I mean, uh, can you, uh, maybe if you repeat the question, I understand better. So, so I, was just, I was trying to comprehend the origin of the non-locality uh, at the end. And so my interpretation of that is you have two time scales, essentially the instantaneous fast time scale of stochastic part, and then the, yes. the hydrodynamic time scale. And it's that separation of time scale that permits the non-locality to emerge. So I was sort of assuming uh, if, if... No, 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 I don't understand better what you mean. Uh, well, I, in maybe uh, maybe that both of my reducing the fact to time reversal or your point of view, maybe they are uh, both acceptable. Uh -huh. Okay, Th thanks. Thanks for that lovely talk. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so there are still no other questions. Um, yeah, so um, is there any hope to deal somehow with non-stationarity? With non-stationary out of equilibrium case? Well, uh, uh, for example, in these uh, driven systems, uh, well, you can put uh, some time dependence both in the external field and in the boundary conditions. Mm -hmm. So uh, there have been uh, uh, some studies in these directions, but uh, I, I think not so much. Um, of course, uh, you can develop a, a theory, and that is what we did in the last reference uh, that I've put, uh, mm -hmm. and this one, which is still on the, on the screen. Uh, um, we have developed what we call um, um, finite time thermodynamics, um, from which we uh, go into the limit of a very slow transformation. We obtain uh, uh, the th a theory of quasi static transformations, which hold uh, also out of equilibrium from stationary state to stationary state because of course you have to move something in order that you can change the stationary state if you want to do that and uh, uh, so i think this uh, uh, at least for um, for um, uh, very slow transformations i think uh, there is a beginning of a theory. But for uh, uh, dramatic uh, transformation, like an explosion, I think this should be more complicated. OK, I see. So, Thank I you mean, so much. You, 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 you must have uh, uh, um, a weak time. That, uh, mm. uh, I mean, weak with what? Mm. What matters uh, is the relaxation time of the system. So how fast the uh, fluctuation relaxate. So okay. if you have uh, something which is uh, 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 slow with respect to the relaxation time, then uh, we understand something. 
Okay. So uh, it seems I, that, yeah, there is one. <laughs> yes, Valerio, you have a question. <laughs> yes, I, um, uh, I wanted to write it in the Q&A, but as a panelist. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I wanted to, to take a step backward and ask, uh, if there is a rigorous way to define a local local equilibrium before defining the fluctuations or per perturbation perturbations around it, uh, because it it was not clear to me. Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> so uh, I mean, as I said, the local equilibrium can be proved. For models, for example, the, um, the simple exclusion uh, or the um, both in the symmetric and the non symmetric case, or weakly asymmetric case, or in the, the case of uh, in which you have no, no correlations, but uh, uh, I mean, there are various uh, models for which uh, you can prove this. Now, uh, the fact that we use uh, a linearization locally, uh, this I think is necessary. Uh, if you want uh, thermodynamic variables to be defined locally at a macroscopic level, so you have to assume that deviations from the equilibrium lo locally are weak. So I don't know whether, again, this answers your questions. Yeah, yeah, no, I think so. Thanks. Huh? I think so, thanks. Yeah. Okay, then since there are no other questions,